We love the street food. You think of all the madness, you think of all the different uh, smells and, and tastes. And it is messy, but the character of the city is all the street vendor. Are you sure that the charm and the messy can go together? This whole space right here, especially at night, would be completely full of vendors. <laughs> For God's sake, when you get up in the morning and make your bed and it's finished off with tight hospital corners, such as they do in the army, you're going to want to regulate the streets and mess the Bangkok is. places in the world offer sites like this. This precision pack-up happens half a dozen times every day. We come to Thailand for these exotic experiences. And, of course, the food. But something's happening in Bangkok that could change the city and its chaotic character forever. My name is Chawadi Nocare. My friends call me Chow. And I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the States. I'm Thai American and I write about food, specifically street food. I blog about it and I've written a couple of books about it. We're on Tong La Road, which is probably one of the more high class residential areas in the city. This sidewalk used to be bustling, full of vendors who would be selling everything from clothing to snacks to full meals. The street vendors of Bangkok are slowly vanishing. Already, the city is no longer what it used to be. Yes, this has definitely been cleared away. This area used to be an Isan restaurant. So, northeastern Thai food? Northeastern Thai food, papaya salad, grilled chicken, especially at night. The whole, uh, the, 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 the air would be perfumed with the smell of smoke and sizzling meat, and this area would be full of people eating. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or BMA, has enforced a ban on street vendors along Rajawiti Road as part of its policy to reclaim sidewalk space for pedestrians. Directing the evictions is the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration. Chief advisor to Bangkok's governor is Wanlop Suwandi. The city of Bangkok has been receiving a lot of complaints from the residents, from the motorists, even from the traffic policemen that the, 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 the vendoring on the, those pavements on those areas cause a lot of the problems to the people. Then upon receiving those complaints, the city of Bangkok banned on the vendoring on those areas. In April, the media reported that a total ban on street food had been declared. The world was incredulous. It seemed like an own goal for a country that relies on tourism. Following the media frenzy, authorities quickly clarified that it wouldn't be a total ban. 
popular tourist spots like Chinatown and the world famous Khao San Road would be spared. But the vendors would be regulated by Bangkok's sidewalk police. Away from the tourist hotspots, thousands of vendors have now been ordered off the main streets. And no one is sure how many more will have to go. It's all part of a campaign by Thailand's military government to restore order. I'm keen to find out what happens after the vendors are evicted. So Chawadi starts hunting for an egg noodle vendor who lost his spot on a sidewalk near here. Street food's meant to be convenient and local, but with so many vendors now on the run, it's not always the case anymore. I honestly have to tell you, I, I have no idea where we are. I would never be here if it wasn't for hearing about this egg noodle guy, you know, setting up shop here. Otherwise, no way. <laughs> it had better be good noodles. There it is. Oh. Ah, cup and card. Thank you. If you're a foodie here, you'll know that not all egg noodles are considered equal. When we finally find Chawadi's egg noodle guy, I discover these ones are freshly made by the vendor. An act of love, considering he doesn't charge any more for them. It's less than $2 for a bowl with broth, wontons, barbecued pork and greens. <laughs> when Sumat Jaratwit was evicted, he'd been selling noodles for 30 years. It seemed easier to retire than start over again somewhere else. But one of his biggest fans couldn't bear to see him go. The customer found him this space outside a supermarket. But most vendors haven't been so lucky. This is one of Bangkok's signature street food dishes, green papaya salad. Sayon Panya has been making it every day for 20 years. She used to park her cart in the same spot every day until the city's so-called sidewalk police told her she was no longer allowed to trade there. To make a living, Sion takes risks, ventures into the tourist area where she's not allowed. I ask her what would happen if she was spotted by the sidewalk police. Go win, 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 win. Look. She's befriended the owners of this stall, and they've told her she can always hide her cart here. Why are you so concerned with untidiness? A lot of people say that one of the charms of Bangkok is that it's a messy, chaotic city. Are you sure? Are you sure that the charm and the messy can go together? The city of Bangkok could not equate, could not recreate, equate the charm of Bangkok with untidiness. Actually, uh, just imagine there's a one tourist or just one people enjoy themselves on the food street in Bangkok and the night after 
have the acute case of diarrhea or even lost their life due to the well what how, how often does that happen i mean generally the street food in bangkok is pretty safe isn't it ah uh, no i don't think so i don't think so in fact bangkok has an enviable reputation when it comes to the quality of its street food cnn recently named it the world's best street food destination for the second year running It's hard to think of another Westerner who knows as much about Thai street food as Australian David Thompson. This Farang, or foreigner, runs what many think is the best Thai restaurant in Bangkok. But he's addicted to this humble street food classic. Over three generations, the family who owns this Chinatown restaurant has prospered thanks to the only item on its menu. The thing is that she's making it crispier and crispier and crispier and it really is the best version of Bangkok that I know of. He tells me the impact of this crackdown is far more serious for locals than for tourists. For example, street food has always been a path to upward mobility for migrants from the countryside or other parts of Asia. The first place you land is on the streets because you can actually set yourself up and give yourself a job that will give you a, a, a lift into a more stable job such as this family's done, such as so many other families done. And which, you know, very often within four generations, some Chinese families have gone from the streets to owning banks. Yes, it's chaotic. Yes, it's disorderly. And yes, it's not quite the way that it might happen in the West or as the military, uh, as, as the army might like, but it is the natural way that it has happened here. Whether you're rich or poor, everybody's got a favourite street food place and perhaps it's the only institution that's still currently remaining that is democratic because simply everybody eats on the streets. Even the Royal Palace is known to place large orders from some vendors. But many people eat on the streets because they have no other choice. It's not just about feeding people, nor, as the government suggests, about entertaining tourists. It performs a much greater social function, and that social function is it provides food for the poor who work in the city who are on minimum wage, and they need to eat somewhere. They can't eat in flash restaurants, or they can't slum it as we, we charmingly do as we come to a place like this. They need this type of institution. Sayon charges just over a dollar for a bowl of freshly pounded papaya salad. As a stream of hospitality workers, tuk-tuk drivers and labourers turn up for their cheap lunch, and realise the vital role people like her play in feeding the city. But as Bangkok becomes more prosperous, there are people who prefer to eat their street food with a side order of air conditioning. The hard realities of life for the poor seem pretty remote in places like this. <laughs> But what happens if cleanliness comes at the expense of character? One of Thailand's leading architects says the people who run Bangkok don't appreciate the city they have. But don't you think Bangkok is already beautiful? As it is. It's already one of the most livable cities in the world for me. The, the problem is that if you don't see that, then we have a problem. Architect Dwangrit Bunag doesn't want Bangkok to repeat mistakes made by other Asian cities. Singapore is a good example. There are people with discipline, a city with uh, rules and regulation. And at some point, their birth rate drops down. <laughs> you see, they don't have sex anymore. Okay? And why is that? Because 
uh, uh, rules work to a certain extent, but not every time. Right now, Duangrit's worried about plans for Bangkok's busy riverfront, inspired by developments in India and South Korea. โครงการพัฒนาริมฝั่งแม่น้ำเจ้าพระยาเมื่อดำเนินการแล้วเสร็จจะทำให้แม่น้ำเจ้าพระยามีภูมิทัศน์ที่สวยงาม This mega development, the first stage alone will run for seven kilometers along both banks of the river, is the brainchild of the general who led the coup and is now prime minister. One day, they come up with the idea, out of the blue, saying, "Okay, we're going to build a promenade into the river." Not on the river, but into the river, without any study, without any assessment. They said, "Okay, we're going to do that." <laughs> If the prime minister wants a promenade along the river, then he's going to get a promenade along the river, isn't he? I mean, Bangkok's not a democracy at the moment. Yeah, that is something very unfortunate. Authorities aren't letting environmental concerns stand in their way. Or historic riverside communities. They're set to receive the same treatment as many of the city's street vendors. These stilt houses were built by and for the poor. h u m i n Samang is very happy here. When the families here are evicted, the government will give them loans for new apartments. But they'll lose access to the river and their unique livelihood. For over 30 years, h u m a n s made his living by diving for antiquities on the riverbed. ลุงนะคุณภูมินที่ลงไปเมื่อกี้เนี่ยเราจะเดินหาที่หาของใส่ไปเรื่อยแล้วเราก็หาโบกดินกรอบดินทำหาเหรียญหาอะไรไปที่มีราคาขึ้นมาขายเราเกาะขึ้นมาแหละเวลาคำคำเวลาเกาะขึ้นมาเจอมีตะกัวตกปลาแล้วก็เหรียญตะตังเหรียญตะตังท้ายกระดุมปีพี่ตัวปีกระดุม On a really good day, they might find a gold ring. On a bad day, it could be a corpse. But on the worst day, the one they know is coming. They'll be forced to leave. ครับเหมือนจะเหมือนบ้านเราบริเวณเหมือนที่ปลูกที่เราบ้านเราโดนเหมือนกันหมดเนี่ยไล่ยาวไปถึงจุดจุดบ้านเราไปถึงสะพานเนี่ยเป็นสะพานเนี่ยสะพาน Those encroaching on the river, they have to they have to move out anyway. I don't think the people, the city of New York or the the city of London, wouldn't allow anyone to build their home on the bank of the Hudson or the bank of the the, the Thames River. Just the same thing. I wonder what p u m a n and his family think about the crackdown on street food vendors. Do they see any link to their own plight? <laughs> Some people have said that they're afraid that Bangkok might be becoming too much like Singapore. Do we need to equate ourselves with the Singapore? Do we need to be at par with New York City, with London? I think 
on certain aspects. That is our, our objective, our prime target. But anyway, we need to also uh, take into the consideration, we need to seek a balance between uh, modernized this year, Bangkok and also to, to retain our charm, our culture. We need to strike a balance. We may not notice one less cart selling papaya salad, but for some tum vendor, Sayon Panya, it's her life. Nudging right up to the railway tracks, this tiny room is where she lives with her husband. Unlike the city's sidewalks, this community of street vendors isn't slated for modernisation. Most here come from the countryside hoping to make a go of it in the capital, and the scrutiny of the sidewalk police is making it even harder for them. Sayon's earnings have taken a real hit since she was evicted. Many of her fellow vendors have already been forced to leave Bangkok. In the good old days, when she had a secure place to work, Sayon made about $40 a day after expenses. Now it's more like $12. Do you think it could reach a point where you couldn't keep doing what you're doing because it just becomes too difficult life on the streets? Street vendors are by nature tough and resilient. But how many will be cleared away by the time the government finishes restoring order? much of Bangkok's character will vanish with them. Okay.